Gentlemen, you've already received your instructions in the dressing room. You both know exactly what I expect. Please give the fans a good, hard, clean fight. Obey my commands and protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves. Good luck to both of you. This is Crawford's hometown. He doesn't like being upstaged. He wants to do something now that matches up to what Ray Beltran did. And there's a right hand over the top, and the crowd responds immediately. And, and put those kind of power shots on an opponent. Usually he takes a couple of rounds and fills them out. But maybe this weight thing has him a little bit heated. 28 years old, given his experience. What you might be watching on a night like this in his hometown in front of these fans. In the conventional stance, double jab with the left hand, right hand over the top. Molina lands a right. Anyone else in the division against Terrence Crawford, but he's the right opponent in front of these hometown fans of Crawford's. Molina trying to figure out when to go, but he's not really sure because Terrence is so set. What he's doing is he's not cutting the ring off, he's following Terrence. Can't follow a guy who's quicker than you. Oh, Good great body, body shot. shot. Oh, and the precision of this is beautiful to watch. He's thinking early knockout, but he's cool as a cucumber while he looks for it. Well, with the exception of one sweeping right hand by Molina, round one was all corporate. It's Arsenal. Still in southpaw stance now as round two begins. And a little more wild pressure, which will likely hasten his demise, but at least give him chances in the meantime. And that's the only chance that he has is to try to put that kind of pressure on him. He knows it's going to get him killed eventually, but he'd rather take a chance of trying to land a big shot first, which is very smart. The only bad thing is you can't follow a big puncher. Like that. When you follow a big puncher, you're bound to... Well, Terrence is both, though. He's a yep. big puncher and a great puncher. So, yeah. so pick your poison. <laughs> don't follow it. Don't follow it, though. Cut the ring off. At least you have a chance to escape the shot. Because you know he's going to wind up in a southpaw stance at some point anyway. He's more powerful from that side. Why would he not turn to a southpaw stance right away? I was surprised he didn't start out as a southpaw. Every now and then, underdogs who are getting ripped like this. Because he doesn't seem nearly as quick as he usually does. And um, that's not good to be in front of Terrence Crawford. So it may have backfired. Crawford seems to be more or less landing at will. He is. Target practice. Crowd's in a frenzy. You have mastered the craft in such a way as to make it look as easy as Crawford can. Lomachenko is one. And so far, having been touched six times by John Molina. Yeah, and I, I, I didn't see those six shots. <laughs> That's true. That's one. <laughs> That's yeah. another. Oh, That's two. That's two. You got to give him his credit, though, Max. He's yep. trying his hardest. Good here, but he's trying. And that's what I like to see. Instead of the, hey, let's stick to the game plan when the game plan's just not going to work. Well, I think this was the game plan. Good body shot by Crawford. Good body shot by Molina in return. Go caution the win and go for it. In this case, the win hits back, though. Yeah. Somewhere Antonio DeMarco is saying, oh, come on, Terrence. I got rid of him in 40 seconds. A little bit of a quick stoppage in that fight. That was on the undercard of Andre Ward versus Chad Dawson. The Oracle. I mean, Molina's just got a lot of heart. Yep, and good. of course you wouldn't expect that he could win a decision here. And Molina was a good choice for an opponent. He's giving people something to watch. John Molina just keeps coming forward with his hands down. I, I mean, he's just wide open. Crawford circling, circling, going both ways, and nailing him with good shots constantly. And that's the story of the fight. Hands down, absolutely wide open. I mean, you couldn't miss him. Which is a very smart shot right there. Forcing John to keep his hands at home when he attacks. But you gotta admire John's heart. Oh. To take punches like that and continue to just 
chase your opponent says a lot about John Molina. You can see why he was in a fight of the year a couple years ago against Matisse. He lost it. But he's in that kind of fight. And against Provodnikov was more of a boxer than the, than, than the... It's like he, John almost lays a punch out like he's expecting to get hit. But he doesn't care. Good oh, body shot. What a body shot. Explosive body shot. Occasionally makes Molina look silly. Obey the bell here. As Molina lunges and reaches and oh Buffett's one of the few guys who can say Crawford doesn't look like a million bucks tonight. He looks like a billion bucks tonight. And by the way, when you're talking about franchises, Max Kellerman, this is the arena in which the Creighton Blue Jays play basketball. And right now they are in the top ten and regarded as a potential candidate for the Final Four the way they're playing. And have a pretty good team, Jim. Very good team. And yet are only the second best performers in this arena. That is correct. <laughs> That's what's causing him to always be behind in the exchanges, like right there. Everything he does is behind Terrence. Or that he's doing much of anything, but there's such a talent gap, there's such a skills gap, and there's Molina giving it everything he has, putting tremendous pressure, everything he can on Terrence Crawford. There's um, value in the effort. And he's making a hell of an effort. I mean, it's highly unlikely to work. John Molina just doesn't exist. And that's why he has trouble beating people like Matisse, Broner, Terrence Crawford, the better opponents against whom he's been in the ring. I mean, the hardest thing in the world is a head-on collision, right? He's bringing it all right to you. Just let him run into that head on collision eventually. Don't take no chance that you run into his. Good overhand left by Crawford. That man hurt Molina. Oh, good hook by Molina. Crowd gets excited here at the beginning of round number six as Crawford comes out and lands a couple of hard shots. Cobb never stepped, stopped coming forward, always was trying, and it, it, Tex Cobb had an otherworldly chin. And Larry Holmes was utterly skilled. This kid has a hell of a body because he just got caught with another one of those vicious lefts to the body that would have took anybody else out of here. Oh, good straight left hand. How many more rounds do you give this one, Roy? Maybe two more at the max. But he's taking too many real vicious shots. And those body shots are making it worse. Yeah, and someone who cares about Molina pretty soon has to consider how much more is worth it. And Molina you what, hustling though, back across the ring. You got to give him credit now. He bought into the plan, and he's trying his hardest to do exactly what him and his corner. But the more aggressive Molina is, the more open he is to Terrence Crawford's precise counter shots. Yeah. Which is why I say it makes no sense for Crawford to step forward to do nothing. John is going to bring it right there. Just wait on it. In a fouling position. Molina doesn't know whether he's fouling or not. Well, for him it is. Uh, Max, he's a fighter. This is what fighters do. So, for him, his goal is to do one thing. Try to land a big shot. Molina has been following Crawford around. Exactly the opposite of cutting off the ring and as a result taking constant punishment. Yeah, and I'm not saying his corner don't care, Max. What I mean is they're trying to get him to do what's necessary to win. They know that that's his only chance. Who's winning this fight and who's winning these rounds? Molina just keeps coming in with his arms down. As far as stopping a fight goes, I mean, he's taking a terrible beating. I would hate to see John Molina get hurt. I wouldn't blame Mark Nelson if he stopped the fight at any point. Six to nothing, Terrence Crawford. I totally agree. This fight could... Because of him following around Terrence Crawford, it is dangerous. Because following a guy like this, you could run into something really bad, something that could be career-ending, the sport of boxing. Right. Nobody makes us come here and take this. We choose to do this. And if this is what we choose to do, then don't take us away from it. He knew he was going to take this coming in. And press the issue of trying to knock him out. And he wants to be fighter of the year. And clearly this is a mismatch. 
Is there pressure on him? Finishing this fight could be crazy if he took a chance and got caught. Like that hook right there, that hook could have changed everything. And the best time to hit a guy is when he's trying to hit you. So if he goes out and tries to take Molina out and runs into a big shot, everybody will be calling him the craziest fighter ever. Really sitting down on some very hard punches, but credit Molina's durability and his heart. And he's doing it when Molina's coming at him, which is the smartest thing to do. And still coming like he thinks he, he has a chance. And he really believes that he has a chance. Hitting him in the back. Good. Crawford demonstrating that with his movement, timing, and his fakes, he can set Molina up and hit him pretty much at will. He's okay. Please go away. Leave him alone. Doctor Cook took a good look and decided not to stop the fight. Harold Letterman's card unofficially shows Crawford still winning every single round in a total mismatch here in Omaha. But Jim, they expected that. This is what everybody expected. This is what Sadiq knew would happen. Nope, if he can land that big shot. So they knew that he was fairly outclassed. He's, oh, good shot right there. See what I'm saying? Look, lands for that's, what, that's what they're looking for. So they didn't expect Molina to be winning the fight. They're looking for a one-shot knockout. They and, told you that. that. So you can't tell him to do it, yet you don't want him to do it at the same time. But the rest of us, though, have to play the odds. And if 99 times out of 100, it, you know, it turns out really badly for the fighter like Molina, then it's understandable if we expect maybe the proceedings to be halted before too long. Any fighter has to have that mentality. Oh, good shot. That's true. the fighter too. himself. That's true, too, but the corner here was expecting just oh. what's happening right here. So they're going to make wait till they see that it's really uh, being detrimental to him before they do it. Right now, they're not saying that he's really in trouble, which he may be, but they don't say that. And he is going to fade and take a real record right now. Molina lands the right hand to get out of the corner. And that's the problem. Right when it seems like he's done, he lands a big shot. Oh, good body shot. He won't, he won't stand many more of those, though. Now is in a frenzy. Mark Nelson's going to stop the fight. Yep. He's almost very smart. He know Molina's a little bit heavier than him, so he sticks the left out, sticks the right out, then comes back with another left right to the body. Beautiful combination, followed by a good left cross jab. A right cross jab. Land, throw a straight left that kind of grazed the chin, but followed by a beautiful right hook that landed right on the chin. Then he missed, slipped the punch, missed the left uppercut, slipped the punch, and then followed with a beautiful straight left hand. Remarkable move. Be sure that if you can touch him, you can hit him. Here you see Molina gets lucky, and he touches Crawford with a right hand, but he's off balance when he throws it. So just in case that cliche is true, here he comes with a real bomb, but he misses and leaves himself wide open. But Terrence just didn't quite get him that time because he wanted to avoid the bomb. Crawford landed the best body shot of the night to me, followed by a short right cross jab again. Right there that landed on the chin. That was a really tough body shot. And these body shots, that was a good uppercut. But those shots right there, Jim, that knocked him off balance, but that body shot is really what caused the damage. And then watch this one. That one right there really did everything. I mean, look at those body shots. The head shots are good, but the body shots like that. You see that? That's what takes it out of a fighter. Those were what were... Ladies and gentlemen, a series of unanswered blows prompts referee Mark Nelson to step in and call a halt to the action with an official time of 2 minutes, 32 seconds of round number 8, declaring the winner. By way of technical knockout, still WBO, still WBC, and still undefeated world champion, Terrence Bud Cole.